going, oh my God. Orange moon. <laughs> Orange moon. And then the green eyes. Green eyes. Yeah, yeah. And she's just always been different and free spirited. Yeah, I love yeah. that about her. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E. He the reason you see me. What was your yeah. favorite Erica Badu song? Your favorite of all time? The favorite one I love is is um, Orange Moon. Orange Moon. Ooh. That's it, right? Now, that's a love making song. <laughs> that's a love making song. <laughs> all right. Y'all got, got to play that now. I'm going to play oh, it. You got to play that one. Oh, my God. Orange moon. Orange moon. And then the green eyes. Green eyes. Yeah, yeah. And she's just always been different and free spirited. Yeah, I love yeah. that about her. And her stuff is, he's still in the pocket, but it's still very different. And Erica knows how to tell a story I, in a song. I went to see uh, Farrakhan over there off of. Uh, love it. Over there off of. Uh, we was over there off of Dolphin, and I went to see Farrakhan, mm -hmm. but I went ballistic because Erica Badu was there. Mm. That was my whole. I forgot about Farrakhan. I love him. Oh yeah, absolutely. But dang, I said dang, Erica, you're a man. But let me tell you about my relationship with the minister. Okay, love Minister Farrakhan. I had a friend of mine was uh, in D.C. She's passed away, but she was working with the United Nations. Okay, and so I put together uh, an African Caribbean big piece for our twenty third uh, season. I had thirty ambassadors. Ambassadors. From Africa and the Caribbean, Caribbeans, and their spouses in Dallas, Texas. Wow! And when the minister did um, the Million Man March, I had called uh, him and asked him if I could put together a one thousand voice male chorus for the Million Man March. And I stayed with the minister, myself, and the woman that I'm talking about with the United Nations, and we stayed with Minister Farrakhan for a week, wow. and I put together the whole perspective about what the Mega Man March was about. And if you look at some of the video, all of these uh, African-American males mm -hmm. dressed in black started at the top of the Capitol and it came all the way down, all the way down. And they sang, sang like we were rehearsed at uh, Walter Fontroy's church. Now, if people don't know Walter Fontroy, Walter Fontroy was one of the big six for the March on Washington in the, in the 1960s. Wow. So... I rehearsed that. So I am the minister, I'm very close to Mr. Farrakhan and his family. He's a he's an amazing, amazing, misunderstood human being. Mm -hmm. Man, I tell you he's what, amazing. man. I, I heard him say something one time. Uh he he said he said Frederick Douglass said power concedes to nothing without a demand. Right. But he said power won't even concede to a demand when it looks like it's coming from a weak constituent right. that's lost his testicular fortitude. Right. Oh my God, yeah. He heavy. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm telling you, I, I, I like it, and I know I, I study a lot. Yeah, that's that's why I was telling you last night. We can we can have whatever kind of sin you want to have. I'm that one to deal with it. Yeah, but I, I think I think that again, I think that we're misunderstood. I think at the time that we exist now, is none of us can afford the luxury to call each other names. Hey, mm -hmm. you know, I don't care what color you are. I don't yeah. care what your race is. The planet is just isn't. Condition for us to beat, bash each other. I think if COVID didn't teach us anything else, it taught us, you know what? You're in prison. Our kids, when they went to COVID, they were in prison. prison that's right. So now we have to try to recondition these kids' minds. They have so many emotional challenges. And that's why I put together this piece called Performing Arts Matter. It's a piece with the Dallas Independent School District. And we have 15, Jade is a part of it. We have 15, wow. uh, young professionals that's going into the schools, particularly in my community, and teaching music, theater, and dance, and teaching them, if you have, if you enjoy the arts, you enjoy learning. Yeah. You know, so make it fun for them to do what they do, but they're learning while they enjoy doing it, and teaching our kids to be able to think Man. on their feet. Okay, Pope, what, what did you, how's it going? It's going good. I'm excited. Okay. What, I'm what, what, I haven't talked a lot, right? Man. You're doing Mr. great. Mr. King, what, 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 if you had a question, what would you ask him? I got three. Oh, you, what? You done wrote three. them down. Well, you get better hurry up. You better hurry up. Oh, yeah, yeah you're on the schedule. So you've been in a lot of projects, and you have done a lot of things. So what is like one of your favorite projects you love to know every year? Well, the project that I absolutely enjoyed doing was really the, uh, I did the piece for the 30th anniversary March on Washington at the Kennedy Center. And it was in 1993. It's by far the best. 
had Dan Rather, Carol Simpson, Bertha Kitt, Halle Berry, mm. Esther Rowe, Billy Esther Preston. Rowe. I had 35 major celebrities like that. And I put together an exhibition that was at the Corcoran Gallery and did the Canada replica of the King concert that we got five Emmys, no, four Emmys for. Mm -hmm. Uh, did at the Kennedy Center, and we got international press as a result of that. Man. So that's my all-time favorite piece project. The other thing would probably be uh, uh, I just I'm thinking about the other, about some other stuff. Yeah, but that's one of the favorites. It was a huge project. Yeah, question. Question. And I gotta ask this: Do you know a man by the name of J. D. Williams? J. D. Williams, yeah, from he's is in New York. Uh, the J.D. Williams, wait a minute. I think he was in Dallas. Maybe I know him when I see him. I can't remember it. A playwright? Uh, no, it was something personal with a fire or something like that. A fire? Was it like J.D. Williams? J.D. Williams. So, growing up, I wanted to go to your program, and my daddy was very strict. But he would not let me go until he figured out it was you, because he said that uh, you <laughs> and his great -grand my great-grandfather had uh, close relations. Who's your great? Who was he? J.D. Williams. J.D. Williams. Williams. Somebody's like, look, you have a picture of it? No, I don't. Wait, well, you have to give me a picture of it. So I'll I can't. Say, I will. That was right. a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was before you was born. Mm -hmm. Way before she wow. was born. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, but th that, that's that's nice, man, that, that, that you know, you, you touch lives and you don't even know it sometimes, right? Yeah, no, I don't. But <laughs> I mean, I would hope that I am doing it. Oh, you're doing it. Yeah. That's your next my question. My last question is. If you could, if you was to leave tomorrow, what is one thing you would want the world to remember you by? Um, that's a, that's a good question. A really good question. Uh, I'm I'm gonna quote Cicely Tyson. Okay, I'm there. I done my best, mm. man. That's what she said when Gail King asked her, you know, how would you want to be remembered? She she dropped her head and she raised her hand up and she said, I done my best. And that's what I would say that after the great Sister Tyson, because I was very close to Miss Tyson, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, I'm going to put a pin that's kind of jump on something you're saying. The other piece would be the piece that I did with Ruby D at the Apollo Theater. Okay. It was called an Even a Music and Spoken Word with Ruby D. And we did it in Dallas, but Miss D wanted to do something at the Apollo Theater because she said she had not been at the Apollo Theater since <clears throat> the 1950s. And we did it. I bought a four-piece band from De Dallas and three-piece background singers, three amazing background singers. Uh, and we rehearsed in Ruby D's house, Ruby D and Oscar Davis' home. We did it at the Apollo Theater. It was a Mother's Day weekend. People standing around the block to get in. And this was the greatest joy I had. It is at the end of the show, Miss Tyson waited on me. She says, put something together like this for me. I said, oh, I'd love to do that. But I took Sister Tyson, held my left hand on, and I escorted her to the dressing room for her to see Ruby D. And I, st I stood there for maybe maybe five minutes and watched Ruby D and Sister Tyson have a conversation. Wow. And that, to me, was amazing. So that would be the other piece, would be a thing that sticks in my memory like that. I think another thing, too, I'm right quick, is the, to direct uh, Esther Rowe in Bethune that's based upon Mary McLeod Bethune's piece. You know, she, Esther Rowe was incredible. She was another incredible actress, too. But to, to have the, the wherewithal to direct her in that show was amazing. And in 1986, I remember this, I directed Esther Rowe in The Amen Corner. Juanita Moore, who you don't know, I know, who starred in Imitation of Life, Life. She played, played Lina Turner's uh, The Maid in that, but she was nominated for an Oscar for that in 1959. Mm -hmm. And then Helen Martin, who was the woman who played Pearl in 227. I directed all of them, and Al Popwell, who played all the Dirty Harry movies, at the Dallas Theater Center in 1986. We did 16 shows, and then we were trying to get additional stuff, and we couldn't, we tried to get additional uh space to do the show, but we couldn't get the additional shows to do that. And so we ended up not doing it. That I have some really memorable stuff to do that. I mean that was when I think about that and all of this it was it was absolutely amazing. So the A Man Corner directing them. 
the uh, Ruby D uh, at the Apollo Theater, the March on Washington piece. Those are some pieces that I that I do. I'm just just I'm awed at this point in my life to have had the opportunity to really have worked with so many great people. And then Romare Bearden. I stayed with Romare Bearden, who's a very famous visual artist, with he and his wife Nanette at uh I want to say 925 Canal Street in New York. I may have the dress well. But with them in Canal Street, Google Romare, R-O-M-A-R-E, Bearden. You know, just amazing. All of these people, people that I've stayed with. Elizabeth Catlett, very famous uh, artist. Uh, she was one of the 25 women that uh, that uh, that uh, Oprah Winfrey honored as a part of the Legends Ball uh, that did her. I was also, I'm also uh, feel good to have put a piece together with Della Reese, you know, in, in California. And she said, we have it all on tape, that she had never been given an individual honor in her career. She's always been, had always been honored and given tributes to with other artists, but never by herself. It was, it was amazing. So I feel, I feel good. I mean, and Beer Richards, I studied on the Beer Richards called the theater of being in California, you know, Bea Richards was uh, a great actor. She plays Sidney Poitier's mother in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Just an incredible actress. Let me ask you this. You've, been, you've done so much. Is there anything left that you haven't accomplished that you want to accomplish? Yeah, I want to do a film. Okay. I'm really interested in doing a feature film. I have a show called Blues Bar okay. that I did in 1994. Billy Preston, Phyllis Hyman, and Roger Moses started that. And I want to do a film. I've already, I've already uh, got the uh, screenplay done, but I want to do a film. At one point, we had Fantasia. Her, her manager, Brian, at the time, Dickens, had uh, gotten her to do the lead. It's about this, this black girl from the South uh, with this blues uh, club that she had grown up in. So I wanted Fantasia to do that because it's a musical theater film. So really good, if I'd say so myself. Wow. It's a good, good piece. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-Heat, a reason you see.